Good morning, John. A few years ago, I found a book in a trash can. And if that sounds weird to you, it's gonna get way weirder than that. I do like look in every trash can I open. I, I've got kind of a thing for trash. Trash is, of course, often quite bad. Uh, that's why it's in there, but it's also just stuff. And it can be like anything. Most stuff is just gonna be like, where it's supposed to be. Like the cars are on the road and the cigarettes are at the corner store and the sandwiches are at the sandwich shop and the clothes are on the person. But in the trash, it could be anything. Like one time I found a whole purse in the trash with like credit card and ID still in there. Somebody had clearly stolen it and taken the cash and tossed it. And I got to reunite it with its owner and I felt like a hero. And that was fantastic for me, but kind of terrible for Catherine who does not like that I have been rewarded for this behavior. So it's not super weird that I was looking into a trash can. It's a little weird that I found a book in there. It's not like it was the end of a semester at a college campus and you could find a bunch of old textbooks that you could then resell on eBay over the summer and make some money, which is what I did in college. And that might explain some of my obsession with trash. So it wasn't weird that I was looking in the trash. It was a little weird that there was a book in there, but the book itself was extremely weird. I know this doesn't seem likely or possible, but the book seemed to know who I was. <laughs> and the book had instructions for me. It wanted me to do things with it and to tell it things. And it said it needed me because it wanted to do something that it couldn't do without me, which was to become human, which is of course impossible. And the book agreed that it was impossible, but it still wanted to try anyway. And so I ignored it, of course, because what else do you do in a situation like that? But every once in a while, I would pick up the book and I would do one of the things that it told me to do. And as I did that, two pretty weird things started to happen. First, the book actually did start to get a little bit more human, like not human obviously, but like the more time I spent with it, the more the object itself went from being like definitely not a human to like if there's a way to get closer to human, it got closer, if you see what I'm saying. But second, I think I started to actually be a bit more human. The more time I spent with the book, the more its sincere appreciation for humans made me appreciate being a human. Finally, I get to the last page and I turn it sort of excited to see how the book would end, as you generally are. What was there was bizarre enough to be almost a little bit upsetting. It said that I wasn't enough and that it needed more and that I could get it to more people. Which I don't know is like super true. That's just like an accurate statement about me. So I made a copy for my brother, but after that it still wanted more. So I made a dozen or so copies for some friends. After that, it still wanted more. So I feel like we need to go a lot bigger. And so we're doing a Kickstarter to see how many we can make. There are two versions. One is $14 uh, so that we can get it into as many hands as possible. But then there's also like a nicer hardcover version with nice paper that we're doing for $27. And also, if you want to have it guaranteed for shipping by Christmas, you could pay two extra dollars for that. But here's what I'll say. It's a good book. Like, I don't know about how you're going to feel, but I was just like desperately grateful to have any opportunity to do like human things with a book rather than inhuman things with a screen for a little bit of time, at least. So as much as the book appears to think that I am doing favors for it, I think that it is doing favors for me. We have kept this Kickstarter as simple and cheap as we can make it. I have no idea how this is gonna go, but hopefully you'll like it. John, I'll see you tomorrow.